This subject is called global warming abatement. Now, you might say, abatement, getting rid of. You mean, Professor Ruzik, there's something we can do about this? And there might well be. So that's the importance of this type of subject. Global warming is caused in part, maybe in large part, by humans' use of carbon-based fuels. And we've taken these carbon-based fuels and we burn them. It makes CO2. And along with other things from our civilization or our agriculture, like methane and carbon fluorocarbons, nitrous oxides, has caused an insulating blanket on the Earth to develop, trapping in more of the re-radiated heat. And so we are under a situation where over the last 100 or 120 years since we've been taking good records, there has been a 0.7 degree centigrade increase in the temperature of the planet on average. One of the best ways that we know to reduce global warming is to somehow block out the sunlight. All right, so here we have our nice sun. All right, yeah, nice guy right here, right? He's got shades. All right, and the sun is beating down rays of light onto the Earth. Here we go, Earth. Well, while the sunlight is coming down, the Earth reaches a certain temperature and it re-radiates energy. Now, a lot of that energy gets stopped by our atmosphere and it comes back, right? So let's say we have these units coming down, we radiate energy out, but much of it, maybe not all of it, but a lot of it, gets re-radiated back and the Earth is at some constant temperature. What we could do is if we could find some object, maybe some kind of cloud, so that some of this sunlight is stopped. Yet, the radiation that's coming off of the Earth, right, this radiation can still go through. Those are not water vapor clouds, because if they were water vapor clouds, it would actually trap more of this radiated heat and reflect it back. For this type of cloud to be effective, to be able to block the incoming sunlight, but still let the re-radiated light, the infrared light through, the one thing we know works is sulfur dioxide. If you listen to the segments on acid rain, you know that we've been combating sulfur dioxide, and now you say, oh, now Professor Rizek, you're saying, let's just throw it up in the atmosphere. It's in a different location. The sulfur dioxide we burn because we're burning coal, that sulfur dioxide is in the very low atmosphere. It will turn to acid rain, it comes back down, it hurts our statues, it hurts our people's lungs, it hurts the fish, it hurts the plant life. That's bad acid rain. If you could take the CO2 and you could put it up in the upper parts of the atmosphere, up where jet planes fly, up at like 40,000 feet, all right? Put it up there, that SO2 will have this effect. It will block some of the incoming ultraviolet, but let the outgoing infrared through. You say, nice in theory. How do we know it works? volcanoes. One of the most impressive volcanoes in recorded history was in 19, 1883, the Krakatoa volcano eruption. And this volcanic eruption was so prominent and so noticeable that it put 11 cubic miles of debris up into the atmosphere. And over the next five years, the world went into what might be called a mini ice age, maybe not that cold. The average temperature was purported to drop 1.2 degrees centigrade for five years.
Sunsets were beautiful. You couldn't see the stars at night. And some places in Europe reported the year without summer. It cooled off the planet. But the other nice thing about it is that it all came out. Putting sulfur dioxide up into the air is not a permanent solution. And that's a good thing. You don't want to try to permanently screw things up. It will come back out. If you ever did something like this, you have to do it every year. You have to have volcanoes every five years. It didn't last for 50. The stuff that went up into the atmosphere does eventually fall out. In more modern times, Pinatubo in the Philippines erupted in 1991. This is actually quite recently. We've had all sorts of wonderful measurements. It was a disaster for the Philippines. There were a lot of indigenous people that lived near that area were killed. I mean, massive eruption. There were an estimated 20 million tons of sulfur dioxide and a lot of other debris and rocks and everything else that went up. 20 million tons of sulfur dioxide. And what it did, we have very good temperature record in the 1990s, what it did is it lowered the Earth's average temperature by 0 0.5 degrees centigrade for one year. Natural geoengineering. Injecting sulfur dioxide, which produces the ability of the sunlight to get to the planet while not reducing the ability of the radiated energy to get through.